So good day po my dear students. For today's video, we're going to talk about the prehistoric mathematics which is according to David Burton year 2011 from his book The History of Mathematics and Introduction 7th edition The Macro Hill Companies Incorporation from 121 or 1221 Avenue of the Americas New York. So when I was reviewing for the licensure examination, this is one of the subjects that I find most interesting. This is because I get to find out that each country has their own history of how mathematics in their country emerges. So to fully understand what mathematics is, let's first have its etymology. So mathematics double came from the Greek word mathemata, meaning any subject for study. So as you can see, my dear students, even before the prehistoric times, meron na pong math. It is just that hindi pa nila alam na math yung tawag doon sa subject na yun. So actually, nung mga unang panahon, may awareness na ang mga tao, kahit anong bansa man yun, na merong numbers. It is just that wala pa silang yung ganoon na formality na meron tayo ngayon. So for example, yung Australian Aboriginal tribe, Actually, yung tribe na yun, meron na silang awareness na there are two numbers. So we have, sa kanila, meron silang konsepto ng one, meron silang konsepto ng two. Pero beyond two, meron na lang silang word na many or much. Opo. So dito naman po sa South American Indians, ang maganda po sa kanila, alam nila na merong one, alam nilang merong two. At Para magkaroon sila ng konsepto ng 3, ang tawag nila sa 3 ay 2, 1. At ang konsepto naman nila ng 4 is 2, 2. So kung baga, ito pinagpartner lang nila para maging 3, which is our concept now of addition. And ito din po, 2 and 2, which is our concept now of addition for 4. Sa Bushmen of South America naman po, meron din po silang konsepto ng 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is actually equal to 10. At kung makikita nyo, may mga markings na rin po sila para mabilang kung ilang days na yung lumipas sa kanila doon sa particular location na yun. So by that, yung mga markings na yun, yun po yung tinatawag nating talis right now. So talis po kasi, this is the most popular way of visualizing numbers. So actually, yung etymology din po ng tallying or tally came from the French verb talier, which means or talier, which means to cut. So di ba kapag nagtatali tayo, para tayo nagkakat kasi dito 1, 2, 3, 4, and then ikakat natin. Or kaya naman sa isang wood nga halimbawa sa branch or I mean sa trunk ng tree, di ba? In order for us to create that notch or that line, di ba? Ikakat natin yung tree, yung gilid niya. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Then ikakat natin yan. So itong mga talis na to are actually present up until now as excavated by our archaeologists. And one of the most famous bones that we have, which um, shows us the tallying or the concept of numbers, is already present. It's the Ishango bone from Lake Edward in Africa. So as you can see, meron po siyang tatlong columns. So naniniwala yung mga archaeologists na ito daw po, ito daw pong mga bones na to, ay may kinalaman sa lunar month. Bakit po? Dahil daw po, ito daw po, itong 11.29.9. At saka po itong 11, 13, 17, 19, kapag pinag-adopt sila, that, that will give us 60, which is the days in the lunar month. And not just that, my dear students, sabi ng mga archaeologists, baka daw po itong 11, 21, 19, and 9 are the first idea of people of the existence of addition and subtraction. Bakit daw po? Because ito po, kung makikita nyo, 10 plus 1 is equal to 11. 20 plus 1 is equal to 11. We have also 20 minus 1 that is equal to 19. 
and 10 minus 1, that is equal to 9. So as you can see, ito daw po ay sabi ng mga archaeologists, baka meron ng idea yung mga tao noon na meron ng addition and subtraction because of these numbers. So ito naman po, makikita nyo that these are prime numbers. Kaya dito po sa column na to, sabi ng mga archaeologists, meron na pong idea, so isulat natin yan, meron na pong idea yung mga prehistoric people about the existence of prime numbers. Prime So dito naman po sa isang bone, kung makikita nyo, sabi ng mga nag-aaral about mathematics and some archaeologists, sabi nila na baka ito is the proof that there is already the idea or the existence of the idea sa mga taon noon na meron ng idea of duplication. And duplication right now is actually synonymous to multiplication, right? So we have here 3 times 2 that is 6, 4 times 2 that is 8, and 5 times 2 that is 10. So aside from that, meron pa po ibang way na nagka-count ang ating prehistoric or our forefathers. So example na lang po ay yung pag i stock ng mga stones during war. And also, halimbawa, kapag nagka-count sila ng ship, ang ginagawa nila dito po, pinapadaan nila dito yung mga ship nila nagda-drop po sila ng stone in order for them to count kung ilan yung ship na meron sila. So not just that, during the early times of French civilization, meron po silang tinatawag na tally sticks. Ito pong tally sticks na po, or tally sticks, meron po siyang mga lines or tinatawag po natin na notches kung saan yung kapal niya po may ibig sabihin. So kung yung kapal po ng isang line is one hand, that is equal to 1,000 pounds. Pero kung yung kapal niya naman po is one thumb, that is equal to 100 pounds. And kapag yung kapal niya po ay kasing kapal lang ng little finger, that is equal to 20 pounds. Now dito po sa tally sticks, kung makikita niyo may breakage po. This is because this will be the receipt of both parties na meron pong business transaction sa kanilang dalawa. So ito pong part na to, ito po yung tinatawag nating stocks. Ito pong stocks na to, ito po yung calendar. At ito po, ito po yung foil na kay borrower po maiiwan. Ngayon po kapag halimbawa si borrower gusto nang ibigay or gusto nang ibalik yung stops or yung kung lan po yung nilend niya kay lender, ang gagawin lang po nila kailangan magmatch po yung breakage nila sa isa't isa at ito pong foil, ibabalik niya na po kay stop or kay lender. Actually, during these times, di ba may tinatawag tayo mga stockholders kasi katulad din pag ng stockholders is parang pinapautang nila yung isang kumpanya ng another money and in behalf, partly noong whole na company is meron silang pagmamay-ari. So, di ba ganun yung parang idea natin ngayon ng stockholders or shareholders? So, kasi dahil yun dito sa stylistics na ito. So, ito po, my dear students, naiiwan kay lender, ito po kay borrower. At kapag gusto na ni borrower na alisin or matapos yung pagkakautang nila sa isa't isa, ibabalik lang ni borrower yung foil at kailangan mag-match. Opo, yung ano natin, yung crack natin dito para masabi na sa kanila talaga yung ano na yun, foil na yun. So not just that, my dear students, di ba po sa ating history, we have the Sumerians, Babylonians, Mayans, and civilizations. At sila po, may kanya-kanya din po silang idea and, and ways on how to express numbers. And aside from that, alam natin na may Greek math, merong Roman mathematics, merong Chinese mathematics, may Hindu, merong Arabic, and also hanggang sa makarating tayo dito sa modern times, kung paano natin iniintindi ang numbers and how, and how we make sense of it. Also, they have their own number system, which I'll gladly share with you on our next video. So stay tuned po, my dear students. That's it for today, my dear students. If you still have questions, please don't hesitate to comment down below.
If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye!